Now, in case of type 1 diabetes, we have seen, अपने देखा है कि दो type के diabetes होते हैं, type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, इसे चार type के होते हैं, mostly दो type के होते हैं, most of the patient, they have two type diabetes, type 1 and type 2, ठीक है, type 1 diabetes is insulin dependent, तो insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, IDDM, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, so for the treatment of such kind of patient, you need insulin, and we have seen the different insulin preparation for treatment of type 1 diabetes, now type 2 diabetes you don't need insulin over here insulin is not required in case of emergency you can it is required but most of the time it is not required so what is required so oral anti diabetic drug okay oral anti diabetic drug and it is also known as oral hypoglycemic drug oral anti diabetic drug oral hypoglycemic drug or oral anti hyperglycemic drug all these terms are the similar okay now there are different classes of drug oral antidiabetic drug. Now first class, okay, first class is nothing but the those drug which increases the insulin secretion. These kind of drug will stimulate the beta cells of pancreas to release the insulin. That's why they enhance the insulin secretion. Or these drug will increase the insulin secretion by acting by different factors. So those drug which enhances, enhances or increases the insulin secretion. In that also you have two subclasses. First one is this and second one is this. Okay. So first class which enhances the insulin secretion is nothing but the potassium ATP channel blocker okay. or KTP channel blocker. You can call them KTP channel blockers. So ATP driven potassium ion channel. So ATP driven potassium ion channel that is nothing but the KTP channel blockers so they drug it will block the this uh, atp driven potassium ion channel and cause high cause depolarization in the beta cells of lacrimal will release the insulin so in that also you have two class first one is a sulfonyl urease and chemically two class first one is sulfonyl urease okay so in that you have tolbutamide okay tolbutamide then glibenkamide then glipizide then glimipiride then glycolyzide. Okay. So you can remember over here first generation or uh, you can remember sulfonyl urease, amide, zides, and pyrite. So tolbutamide, glibenclamide, gliben, glibenclamide, then glipizide, then glycolyzide. So azides, amides, and pyrite, glimipyrite. Okay. So these are nothing but the sulfonyl urease. Sulfonyl urease. They will have a structure like urea and sulfur of the SO2, NH. C double and O in H2. Okay, so like that. Okay, sulfonyl urease, tolbutamide, glibenclamide, glipizide, glycolyzide, and glimipiride. So amide, zide, amide, zide, and pyride. These are the sulfonyl urease. Again, KTP channel blocker, another class is there known as megalitinides. Megalitinide, megalitinide, or D phenyl alanine analog. D phenyl alanine analog. So in that, you have two drugs. Repaglinide and nitaglinide. So glinides are nothing but the megalitinide. So you can see megalitinide. So glitinides, repaglitinide, nitaglitinide. These are the again potassium channel blocker, KTP channel blockers. Okay. So this was the first class. Now uh, in the first class, second uh, subtype is nothing but the dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitor known as a DPP-4 inhibitors, DPP-4 inhibitors. So they will also release the insulin, they will also increase the insulin secretion by metabolism. So this dipeptidyl peptidase, dipeptidyl peptidase is a one enzyme responsible for the metabolism of glucagon-like peptide, GLP-1, okay? So its mechanism and all that, we'll see it later. Just remember the class. So we are seeing the, we are seeing the oral antidiabetic drug, first class is nothing but the those drug which increases or which enhances the insulin secretion in that you have two subclass first one is a potassium ktp channel blocker and second one is a dipeptidyl peptidase inhibitor we have seen the potassium ktp channel blockers now dipeptidyl peptidase inhibitor they are nothing but the glyptins cetagliptin then uh, vildagliptin then saxagliptin alugliptin then linagliptin so glyptins are nothing but the DPP-4 inhibitor. So you have to remember this class. So they may ask you. So they may ask you the question. So like cetagliptin, 
is the drug used in the treatment of diabetes and it is it acts by following mechanism so inhibition of diabetic peptidase or they may ask you a question like this match the following examples of drug used in the diabetes with their respective class or and they will give you the examples of drug in one column in another column they will give you the class so such kind of question they used to ask frequently so remember amides glycides and pyrite they are the sulfonyl urease glenitinide okay repaglinide nitaglinide glenides are the meglitinides then uh, gliptins thetagliptin viltagliptin saxagliptin then alogliptin and linagliptin gliptins are the dpp4 inhibitors okay this was the first class now second class is nothing but the drug used to overcome the insulin resistance ye drug kis mein use karenge this kind of drug they are used in the patient who have insulin but there is a less production of insulin they will increase the production of insulin okay such kind of drug used but those drug now if the patient is having insulin resistance this kind of drug are used that is a class second drug used to overcome the insulin resistance so what are the drug they are nothing but the bigonides they are first class is a bigonide and uh, second class is thiazolidine diones so second class of oral hypoglycemic drug those drug used to overcome the insulin resistance so in that you have two subclass first is a bigonides so okay, bigonides in that you have formins formin metformin phenformin okay metformin phenformin they are nothing but the bigonide derivative and they act by amp k activator they act by activation of this amp okay, amp kinase activator they are known as amp kinase remember then second class in this second sub class in this is nothing but the thiazolidine diones thiazolidine diones they act by one specific activation of one specific intracellular receptor known as a ppar gamma receptor okay i will explain this at the end of this lecture now in this category you have pyoglitazone and rosiglitazone yahan pe metformin benformin yahan pe pyoglitazone rosiglitazone they are drugs so rosiglitazone pyoglitazone they are the thiazolidine diones metformin benformin they, they are nothing but the bigonides okay now third class used in the diabetes anti diabetic drug or oral and anti diabetics so third class is nothing but the miscellaneous drug in that you have again different sub classes so every every book has given different uh, different classification so remember alpha glucosidase inhibitor alpha glucosidase inhibitor so jiske end mein bos aata hai bos p o s so baglibos then acarbos and meglitol these three baglibos acarbos and meglitol these are nothing but the alpha glucosidase inhibitors and all these three drugs they are nothing but the oligosaccharide ye kya hai oligosaccharide ye oligosaccharide meglitol valgibos and acarbos then next class in the miscellaneous is amylin analog amylin analog so example is pramlentide 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 is a example remember amylin analog pramlentide then next class is dopamine to receptor agonist bromocriptine so we have also seen this in a antipsychotic drug the dopamine to agonist then again this class is there so this is a very important drug again sodium glucose contra transporter 2 inhibitor or sglt2 inhibitor sodium glucose contra transport 2 inhibitor so this is a transport of glucose sglt2 this transport of glucose is present in the kidney ठीक है, so particularly in the PCT proximal convoluted tubule, तो होता क्या है normally normally what happens, so increased the blood sugar level, whatever sugar level is there in the blood, so all blood is filtrated in the glomerulus of kidney, glomerulus में क्या होता है कि filtration होता है blood का, okay, so at that time each and everything will be filtered, okay, but in the PCT there is a reuptake mechanism, so whatever is important for body that will be taken up. So glucose is also important for body. So glucose will be reabsorbed from proximal convoluted tubule by this SGLT2. Is the glucose transport. So SGLT2 is responsible for the reabsorption of glucose from PCT. Okay. Now if you inhibit this SGLT2, so there will be excretion of glucose. Okay. There will be no reabsorption and there will be excretion of glucose in the urine. So obviously, if you increase the excretion of glucose. from the blood 
so blood glucose level will go down so sodium glucose contraport to inhibitor in that you have glyphosins 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 depa glyphosin then uh, sena glyphosin etc etc so we will see again you can see the classification from another book anti hyperglycemic drug or drug used in the treatment of diabetes so they are classified into two types first one is a parenteral drugs so those used by parenteral route injectable route so in that you have insulin and its preparation insulin and its preparation we are seeing the preparation with insulin and its preparation they are done by parenteral route now other class second class in the parenteral route is nothing but glp analog so what is glp i will explain glp analog glp means glucagon like peptide glp analogs so in this you have exenatide exenatide and liraglutide liraglutide and exenatide so remember here again glp analogs they are natides or lutides natides or lutides exenatide tide tide matlab glp analogs ye aapko malum ho sakta glip gliplozin matlab matlab kya ye glt2 inhibitors okay amide azide and pyrite matlab sulfonyl lutides formin matlab kya bigonides formin matlab bigonides आपको ये मालूम होना चाहिए ग्लिप्टिन ग्लिप्टिन मतलब ग्लिप्टिन जो होता है इसी तरह ग्लिप्टिन वाला ग्लिप्टिन होगा सो ग्लिप्टिन मतलब डीपीपी फोर इनिमेटर्स तो क्लास याद ही होना चाहिए ऐसा टारगेट्स मालूम हो तो क्लास आपको इजीली मालूम हो जाए दिस पेरेंटली थर्ड क्लास इज नथिंग बट अमाइलिन एनालॉग प्रेम लेंटाइड प्रेम लेंटाइड अमाइलिन एनालॉग इज नथिंग बट प्रेम लेंटाइड सो दिस ड्रग आर यूज्ड पेरेंटली नाउ व्हाट आर द ओरल ओरली यूज्ड ड्रग सो ओरल हाइपोग्लाइसेमिक ड्रग oral hypoglycemic drug so in that also you have two subtypes so those drug which releases the insulin so insulin release increase control so in that you have sulfonyl urease and megalitinides sulfonyl urease and megalitinides sulfonyl urease again they are classified into two type first generation and second generation so first generation you have to chlorpropamide and tolbutamide and in the second generation you have glipizide glycolazide and glibing chemide now megalitinides that is nothing but the megalitinides are nothing but the repaglinide and nateglinide these are the two drugs belongs to megalitinides repaglinide and nateglinide now this is the insulin releaser again i am repeating okay those drug which act by other mechanism other mechanism kya hai different different for example this first one is a bigonides in this we have made formin pen formin they are nothing but the amp k okay amp k agonist amp kinase agonist okay then uh, another class is nothing but the thiazolidin diones so in that you have pyoglitazone and rosiglitazone then alpha glucose raise inhibitor so megalitol acarbose and baglibose dopamine to receptor agonist bromocatin dpp4 inhibitor all the glyptins like cyclagliptin beta glyptin saxagliptin and alloglyptin etc sodium glucose transporter to inhibitor so all the glyphosins like depa glyphosin kena glyphosin they are the glt2 inhibitors so classification important today they can ask you question on the classification any kind of question very very important again you see the classification again classification of anti diabetic drug i am taking three times because it is important baad mein phir question aa gaya to baad mein so again classification so first is a those drug which increases the insulin secretion so in that you have different sub classes like first one is sulfonyl urease which are nothing but the ktp channel blockers first generation is the tolbutamide second generation is a glimecamide glimecamide is also known as a glyburide glipizide then glimepiride then megalitinides in that case you have repaglinide and nateglinide megalitinides are also known as a d phenylalanine analogs then third in this category third is a glucagon like peptide agonist okay glp1 agonist so exenatide and lira glutide exenatide and lira glutide then fourth class those act by releasing the insulin dpp dipeptidyl peptidase four inhibitor so all the glyptins glyptins cita glyptins valda glyptin saxa glyptin lira glyptin they are the dpp four inhibitor second major class first major class was those acting by insulin release is me char class kaun sa bhi classification aata hai again second class is a those drug which overcome the insulin resistance so in that case first one is a bigonides 
they are known as AMP K activator. Cyclic AMP kinase activator. So in that you have example of phenformin and metformin. Phenformin, metformin. Second class in this thiazolidin dance. Miscellaneous drug thiazolidin dance. So they are known as PPAR gamma activator. In that way you have pyoglitazone and rosiglitazone. Other glitazones are also there but they are no more used because of their cardiac adverse reaction. Only two drugs are used. Ropa, pyoglitazone and rosiglitazone. Now another drug known as a category, another drug category known as alpha glucosidase inhibitor. So acarbose, maclitol, valgibose, etc. Then amylin analog, pramlentide, G2 receptor agonist, promocaptin, and sodium glucose two transporter inhibitor. Depagliflozin and canagliflozin. Okay. This was the classification. I have explained this classification three times. Individual category of drug. Now first one is a sulfonyl urease. Is like tolbutamide, chlorpromide, glepingamide, glimipride. What is the mechanism of action of this? So they used to stimulate the pancreatic cells. So stimulation of insulin release by stimulation of beta cells. Okay, and they also increase the sensitivity of the beta cells to the glucose. So stimulation of insulin release from beta cells of lactans also increases the sensitivity of beta cells. Sulfonyl urease they are known as a, they are having their own receptor like. ATP dependent potassium channel receptor or KTP which is responsible for the depolarization. Now inactivation or blockage of this inactivation activation. Inactivation of potassium channel results in the calcium implus and depolarization of membrane of the beta cell and this causes the release of insulin. In the liver they also inhibit the neoglucogenesis or gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis. These two mechanisms contribute for pure anti application. First, they will stimulate the beta cells to release the insulin, and in the liver, they will activate the prevent the gluconeogenesis or glycogenolysis. Now, pharmacological actions after oral administration, after oral administration, these drugs will decrease the blood sugar level in diabetic as well as non-diabetic patients. Okay, normal subject may be a blood sugar level come karenge, normal kisini kaya. So if normal subject uh, ingested this uh, tablet, so blood sugar level will decrease. In case of diabetic type, okay, type 2 diabetics, not in a type 1 diabetics. So they also decrease the blood sugar level of diabetic patient, type 2 diabetic, not type 1 diabetic. Also lowers the increased fatty acids levels in the patient. They are only effective when there is a certain amount of beta cells present in the cell, present in the pancreas. It's not that if any patient has a pancreatic operation and it has a beta sense to move it, it doesn't work at all. So these drugs, they stimulate the insulin release and the insulin release will be stimulated when there is a presence of beta cells. So those patients who have been undergone pancreatomy, they will not respond to this sulfonyl urease. And remember, sulfonyl urease treatment will increase your weight. By 1 to 3 kg. So, sulfonyl diuris ka treatment agar koi le raha hai, to uska weight gain hoga. 1 se leke 3 kg. Now, ADME, absorption distribution metabolism elimination. They are rapidly absorbed from empty stomach. Food in the stomach reduces their absorption. They are extensively bind to plasma protein. We have plasma protein ko bind karte hai. Obviously, drug-drug interaction hoga hoga. So, those displacement type of drug-drug interaction will be there. And again, this sulfonyl diuris Okay, so they are also, their kinetics also changed in presence of enzyme inducer and then the inhibitors. So what are the adverse effects? First, first adverse effect of sulfonyl urease is nothing but weight gain. Weight gain is moderate, 1 to 3 kg. Then hypoglycemia can result due to overdose of this drug. Decrease in the food intake, anorexia, that is anorexia, vomiting. Okay, liver, kidney disease, protein displacement type of interaction with the drug. Then allergic reaction, sulfonyl urease will cause allergic reaction like sulfonamides, bone marrow, depression, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, egg granulosis. They will also cause a disulfiram like reactions. Then cholestatic joints, occasionally pulmonary eusonuclea caused by chlorpropamide. These are the adverse effects. Now what are the uses? Therapeutic uses. For the treatment of fresh, fresh case of maturity onset type of diabetes, that means type 2 diabetes. Non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and diabetes insulin they are used. So what are the limitations of these categories? So they are effective in insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, 
diabetic coma, presence of in presence of infection, heavy ketonemia. Okay, so they cannot be used. So they are ineffective in case of insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. So type first diabetes may ye ineffective. Because type first may kya hota hai ki there is a destruction of beta cells of Langerhans. So these drug they act by releasing the insulin. So if there is no beta cells, then how they can release insulin? So they are ineffective in case of insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. They are ineffective in diabetic coma. They are ineffective in case of presence of infection, heavy ketonemia. Diabetes due to pancreatomy. Surgical diabetes are very long-standing diabetes. So these are the limitations of sulfonylurea. Now how they will act? Mechanism of action. You can see over in this image. So this is known as a sulfonylureas or megalidinides. Sulfonylureas and megalidinides will have a receptors known as a sulfonylureas receptor one. Which is nothing but the, it is attached to a ATP dependent potassium channel, KTP channel, ATP dependent potassium channel. So, जैसे इस सेल में ATP का potassium बढ़ता है, तो ये channel open हो जाता है और potassium को बाहर लेके जाता है. So, it causes the expel, it it causes the efflux of potassium, efflux of potassium, बाहर भेज देगा ये potassium. Now this, now this magnetinides and sulfonylureas, they binds to this KTP dependent potassium channel and inhibit it. Okay, or it inactivated so that causes retention of potassium that causes retention of potassium inside the cell okay and increase the amount of potassium inside the cell causes depolarization in the cell and this depolarization okay this uh, increase the potassium co concentration inside the cell causes depolarization now de when depolarization depolarization reaches to a specific threshold level and at that threshold level, there is activation of calcium channel. So calcium channel will be activated. Calcium will move inside from the outside. So it will again contribute to hyperpolarization, and this calcium will act on insulin granules. जो insulin granules है जो store किए हैं उसके ऊपर act होगा. Calcium will act on this insulin granule, and it will release the insulin by exocytosis. Exocytosis will be there, and insulin will be released. So that's how this sulfonylureas and magnetinides act. You have another, you have another uh, receptor known as a GLP-1 receptor or incretin receptor. GLP-1 receptor or incretin receptor. So I have explained this uh, two classes mechanism much. So uh, sulfonylureas ka mechanism ho gaya aur magnetinides ka mechanism ho gaya. Abhi dusra ek class hai apka, usko bol de hai apan. Incretins, incretins, incretins or GLP peptide glucagon like peptide agonist. They are known as a incretins. Okay. So what will they do? So they will bind with the receptors, incretin receptors, glucagon like peptide GLP. For example, GLP or GLP agonist. These drugs will bind to incretin receptor, which are nothing but the G protein coupled receptor. So activation of this receptor causes Activation of adenyl cyclase. Activation of adenyl cyclase. AC means adenyl cyclase, which will convert ATP into cyclic AMP. And this cyclic AMP will also cause increased cyclic AMP in the cell, pancreatic cell, will cause release of insulin in the one way. So this GLP and GLP means glucagon-like peptide. The glucagon-like peptide one. This will act on incretin receptor. Now glucagon-like peptide. Okay, so agonist to the incretin receptor is nothing but the exatinide and liratinide. Exatinide and liratinide. These two examples are of exatinide and liratinide. So they are incretin receptor agonists. Okay, now this glucagon-like peptide is metabolized. Okay, glucagon glucagon-like peptides they are metabolized by one enzyme known as a dipeptidyl peptidase four. Dipeptidyl peptidase four will inactivate or metabolize this GLP glucagon like peptide into inactive. Okay? If it is inactive, then it will not act on the receptor. It will not act on the metabolize receptor. It will DPP, dipeptyl peptidase 4. Okay? Now this enzyme is inhibited by this product. Cetagliptin, Vildagliptin and Jobigliptin cell. So gliptins are nothing but the DPP4 inhibitors. So here I have explained the mechanism of action of three classes. So how these sulfonylureas megalitinides, then how these gliptins, how these exentides will act. So remember this uh, again, 
sulfonyl urease magnetinides they will inhibit this atp gated potassium ion channel ktp okay and that leads to increase in the concentration of potassium inside the cell which causes depolarization when depolarization depolarization reaches to a threshold level calcium channel will open calcium will go inside and will cause degranulation of this insulin granule and will release the insulin and that that can decrease the blood sugar level now this uh, glp like glp1 glucagon like peptide they will be released in response to increase the blood glucose level जैसे आपके बॉडी में ग्लूकोज लेवल बढ़ता है तो ये जी एल पी वन जो इंटेस्टाइन में है वो सिक्रेट हो जाता है एंड दे आर नथिंग इन दी प्रोटीन कपल रिसेप्टर एक्टिवेशन ऑफ दिस रिसेप्टर कॉज इज एक्टिवेशन ऑफ एडिनल साइक्लिज विच इंक्रीजेज द साइक्लिक ए एम पी लेवल इन द सेल एंड दिस कॉज इज रिलीज ऑफ इंसुल नाउ दिस ग्लूकोन लाइक पेप्टाइड इज मेटाबलाइज बाय डी पी पी दैट इज डायपेप्टी पेप्टीड इज फोर एनजाइट ओके and that is inhibited by sitagliptin valdagliptin and this uh, ingredient agonist they are neutral they are known as exitinide and liradinide we have seen this this is the mechanism how these four classes will act as a anti diabetic now we can see over here again the second class is bigonides in the bigonides we have pen formin made for now in case of bigonides free gonadine radical is important for hypoglycemic pen formin and metformin so out of that this pen formin is banned in the india since 2006 ye pen formin jo hai ye 2006 ke baad mein usko ban kiya hai because this pen formin has a one adverse reaction so this pen formin pen formin or bigonides in the bigonide class you have two uh, two example that is pen formin and uh, metformin now what is metformin is used but this pen formin is not used pen formin was the first drug from bigonide category and it causes the lactic acidosis it was uh, causing lactic acidosis that's why it was banned from the market penformin now how they will act metformin penformin now they will act they will not stimulate beta cells of langerhans to release the insulin but they will act upon a different mechanism they will activate this cyclic they will activate they will activate this amp dependent protein kinase enzyme they will activate this amp dependent protein kinase enzyme and they will increase the uh, they will uh, they will uh, increase the utilization of glucose okay they will prevent the hepatic gluconeogenesis jo naya glucose banne ka kaam kar raha hai liver gluconeogenesis so that will be prevented activation of this amp dependent protein kinase will prevent the hepatic gluconeogenesis again increase in the peripheral glucose level glucose utilization so they act by decreasing the gluconeogenesis and increasing the peripheral utilization of glucose delay in the glucose absorption and increases the sensitivity of insulin towards the to the peripheral tissues these are the action remember these uh, bigonides they will not release insulin they will act by different way they will activate this uh, AMP protein kinase enzyme, and they will prevent the hepatic gluconeogenesis. They will increase the peripheral utilization of glucose. They will delay the glucose absorption. Okay, and they will also increase the sensitivity of cells towards the insulin. These are the mechanisms. And remember, this metformin. Metformin is drug of choice for type two diabetes. Mainly, who is metformin? Metformin is drug of choice for type 2 diabetes mellitus pen formin is banned in india due to lactic acidosis the pharmacological actions of this drug so they don't they do not lower the blood sugar level in normal patient obviously they decrease the blood sugar level in the diabetic patient but not in normal patient this drug potentiate the insulin potentiate the action of insulin and sulfonylureas the this drug can develop ketoacidosis with minimum hyperglycemia and glycosidia because they do not elevate The ketogenesis. They, the plasma cholesterol lowered in simply protein and triglyceride level. They also, it is not increased. Absorption, distribution, metabolism, elimination. So they are absorbed from oral limbs. They are adequately absorbed by PO oral food. Okay, particularly metformin is largely excreted unchanged. Because metformin के structure में क्या आता है? Bigonide होता है और दो methyl group होते हैं. So it is exchanged. it is excreted unchanged 
बट फेन फॉर्मिन में क्या होता है कि फिनाइल ग्रुप होता है ठीक है सो दैट्स व्हाई फेन फॉर्मिन इज नॉट लाइक बट इट इज नॉट यूज्ड ड्यू टू लैक्टिक एसिड इज बैंड व्हाट आर द एडवर्स डग रिएक्शन सो एडवर्स डग रिएक्शन रिमेंबर अनप्लीजेंट एंड बिटर मेटालिक टेस्ट अनप्लीजेंट एंड बिटर मेटालिक टेस्ट इन द माउथ देयर एनोरेक्सिया एनोरेक्सिया मींस लॉस ऑफ एपेटाइट नोशिया एब्डोमिनल डिस्कंफर्ट दे आल्सो प्रोड्यूसेस द लिथर्जी मस्कुलर वीकनेस एक्सेसिव वेट लॉस ड्यू टू एनोरेक्सिया इसे एनोरेक्सिया करेगा एनोरेक्सिया मतलब लॉस ऑफ एपेटाइट लॉस ऑफ एपेटाइट करेगा भूख नहीं लगेगा आपको खाना नहीं खाओगे तो एक्सेसिव वेट लॉस इन फ्यूगेशन देन लैक्टिक एसिडोसिस लैक्टिक एसिडोसिस वाज द एडवर्स इफेक्ट विद द वेन फॉर्मिन एंड दैट्स व्हाई इट वाज बिटर ऑन फॉर्म मार्केट व्हाट इज द थेरेपेटिक यूज ऑफ दिस बाइकोनाइड सो इट इज यूज्ड इन द ओबेस पेशेंट व्हिच इज नॉन इंसुलिन डिपेंडेंट डायबिटीज मिल्टस सेकेंडरी फेलियर टू सर्पन यूरिया सर्पन यूरिया का ट्रीटमेंट अगर दे रहा है उसमें अगर कोई रिजल्ट नहीं आ रहा है तो उसको इसकी जगह इसको यूज करो पॉलीसिस्टिक ओवरियन सिंड्रोम रिमेंबर पॉलीसिस्टिक ओवरियन सिंड्रोम इज आल्सो यूज सो दीज आर द यूजेस ऑफ योर बायोनाइड्स नाउ नेक्स्ट क्लास इज नथिंग बट द एकारबोस नेक्स्ट क्लास इज नथिंग बट द अल्फा ग्लूकोसिडेज इनहिबिटर एकारबोस मैग्नीटोल वोल्गीबोस दीस थ्री ड्रग्स आर नोन एज अ alpha glucosidase inhibitor alpha glucosidase is the enzyme found in the brush borders of jejunum enterocytes aapka jo intestine hota hai wahan pe jo cell hai uske usme ye enzyme hota hai and enzyme is responsible for the uh, breakdown of oligosaccharide into monosaccharides and after that monosaccharide will be absorbed so these drug they will not reach the insulin they will not inhibit other enzymes they only prevent the absorption of monosaccharides okay so remember acarbose maglitol ogli oglibose so these three drugs they bind they belongs to alpha glucosidase inhibitor category and they inhibit the enzyme responsible for the conversion of oligos oligosaccharide into monosaccharide and they prevent the absorption of monosaccharide okay so these all these three drugs agar acarbose maglitol and oglibose these are nothing but the oligosaccharides from microbiology they competitively inhibit the carbohydrate binding site they completely inhibit the this enzyme alpha glucosidase in the brush borders of enterocytes and inhibit it okay they are alpha glucosidase inhibitors remember they prevent the they prevent the absorption of carbohydrate but not the glucose because glucose ka absorption glucose transport glucose transport karta hai so they prevent the absorption of other monosaccharides but not the glucose but till they prevent the absorption of monosaccharides and they will they will be able to break down the blood sugar level at a some extent what are the adverse drug reaction adverse drug reactions are nothing but the platelets abdominal discomfort loose stool smells diarrhea occasionally they will increase the liver metabolizing enzyme so maglitol is less maglitol is maglitol is maglitol is similar to acarbose but less hepatotoxic another drug from this category is oglibose oglibose is also similar similar to maglitol and acarbose both drugs are contraindicated in patient with a chronic intestinal disease irritable bowel disease so those the those patient who are having irritable bowel syndrome these drugs are contraindicated now next category of drug is nothing but the thiazolidine diazoles thiazolidine so in this you have glitazones pyoglitazone rosiglitazone and there are other glitazones but other glitazones they are no more used in the they are no more used in the therapeutics because they other glitazones will have adverse effect on cardiovascular system like they will cause arrhythmia they will cause stroke they will cause heart block that's why they are not they are banned so only two drugs are used from this category thiazolidine and pyoglitazone and rosiglitazone so they binds to one en one enzyme okay they binds to intracellular receptor they binds to binds and activate paroxysm proliferator activated receptor that is known as gamma paroxysm paroxysm proliferator activated receptor known as gamma so ppar g ppar ar ppar gamma it is a nuclear receptor that regulate the insulin expression responsive gene involved in the peripheral utilization of glucose matlab ye kya hai it is a gene responsible for the increase in the glucose transport ye gene kya karega glucose transporter ka production bada dega so these glitazones they activate this paroxysm proliferator activated receptor gamma and activation of this receptor causes increase in the gene expression and production of more protein which is responsible for the utilization of glucose 
so increase in the glucose transport into muscle so increased the amount of glucose transport increased the amount of glucose transport causes increase in the glucose transport into muscle and adipose tissue the main site of action of this thaya the main site of action main site of action of this thiazolidine dions is nothing but the adipose tissue adipose tissue is the main site of action remember they increases the utilization of glucose in peripheral tissue muscles and adipose tissue by increasing the synthesis and translocation of specific amount of transporter protein responsible for the glucose utilization what are the actions pharmacological action they decreases the insulin resistance and hyper eu hyper insulinemia they also increases the plasma level of high density protein and low density protein. adverse drug reaction kya hai ki dekho adverse drug reaction decrease in the hemoglobin decrease in the hemocrat neutrophils count decrease hota hai increase in the enzymes use kya hai non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and polycystic ovaries now you can see over here different classes of drug used in the diabetes again over here so whatever drug whatever food you are taking so whatever starch you are taking that is uh, broken down by amylase enzyme pancreatic amylase and converted into oligosaccharides now oligosaccharides are converted into monosaccharides by this enzyme alpha glucosidase and there is inhibited by acarbose by glucose and maglitol whatever glucose is present in your body whatever glucose is present in your blood so this glucose is normally this glucose is utilized by different muscle cells and different cells now that utilization is enhanced or utilization is increased by metformin and glitazone okay and glitazone inhibit the gluconeogenesis so they inhibit the production of glucose in the liver so obviously blood glucose level in case of this oral sulfonyl ureas and glenides okay repaglenide and nateglenides they increases the production of insulin they increases the stimulation of insulin and that will decrease the blood glucose level so that is a summary of different drugs acting on a uh, blood glucose now again there are certain drugs which causes hyperglycemia there are certain drugs which increase the blood sugar level so hormones like glucagon glucocorticoids thyroid hormone then estrogen progesterone okay, adrenaline noradrenaline and beta blockers they will increase the blood sugar level thiazoxide phenytoin thiazides nicotinic acid so these drug can increase the blood glucose level okay so drug causing hyperglycemia drug causing hyperglycemia these are the examples of drug causing hyperglycemia so remember this glucagon glucocorticoids thyroid hormone estrogen progesterone adrenaline noradrenaline beta blockers thiazoxide phenytoin nicotinic acid and thiazides so they causes increase in the blood glucose level hyperglycemia now drug causing hypoglycemia there are certain drug which decreases the blood sugar level mao inhibitors then beta blockers disopyramide alcohol ace inhibitors quinine and lithium hypoglycemia nervosa hypoglycemia nervosa hypoglycemia nervosa so drug causing hypoglycemia unawareness or hypoglycemia nervosa so non selective beta blocker they suppresses the hypoglycemia caused by beta blocker non selective beta blocker they suppresses the hypoglycemia and that is known as the hypoglycemia unawareness or hypoglycemia nervosa now there are certain different sweetening agents for example saccharin saccharin sodium is used as a sweetening agent which is a carcinogenic in nature it is a 500 times more sweeter than sucrose then aspartame is also there aspartame is nothing but the esters of a dipeptide dipeptide of aspartic acid and uh, dipeptide of aspartic acid and methyl ester of phenylalanine so it is a again remember aspartame is a 200 times more sweeter than sucrose then its analog is also there is brother is also there so known as a neotame neotame is also 30 to 60 times more sweeter than aspartame there are certain important pin points on this chapter i will learn. remember alpha 2 receptor stimulation or sympathetic alpha 2 receptor stimulation inhibit the insulin release but beta 2 stimulation sympathetic beta 2 stimulation will increase the insulin release beta blockers will mask all sign of hypoglycemia produced by non selective beta blocker except sweating insulin preparation all insulin preparation are supplemented in a ph range known as a 
7.4 except glaring glargin glargin preparation insulin preparation is supplied at 4 pH iske upar question aa sakta remember sulfonyl ureas they are they are safe in the linear renal failure renal failure mein sulfonyl ureas safe hai except kya hai except glyburide and meglitinide then remember metformin is a drug of choice in type 2 diabetes mellitus it is a first line drug therapy for type 2 diabetes now bigonides act by decreasing the production of glucose and increasing the peripheral utilization of glucose as it is question is ke upar bahut baar aaya rossi glitazone increases the risk of angina myocardial infarction as well as increases the high density lipoprotein most of the glitazones they are banned only two are used in therapeutics that is a pioglitazone and rossi glitazone pioglitazone has a risk of bladder cancer ye pioglitazone jo hai वो एक ब्लैडर कैंसर का रिस्क है उसको सो इन टू थाउजेंड आई थिंक इलेवन दिस पायोग्लिटाजोन वॉज बैंड बट इमीजिएटली विद इन सिक्स मंथ द बैन ऑन बायोग्लिटाजोन वॉज रिवोकड एंड दे मैंशन दैट पायोग्लिटाजोन विल नॉट बी अ फर्स्ट लाइन एजन फॉर डायबिटीज सो एंड अगेन पायोग्लिटाजोन मार्केटिंग वॉज नॉट दिस पायोग्लिटाजोन बिकॉज ऑफ द ब्लैडर कैंसर बैंड but uh, because of because of insufficient evidence it was again again started market primaglinide primaglinide is a approved drug for treatment of type 1 as well as type 2 diabetes it is nothing but the amylin ingredients okay ingredients and uh, new drugs new drugs for diabetes ingredients they act by two mechanism they are used in the <coughs> diabetes mellitus new drug ingredients they act by two mechanism first they will act as a glucagon like peptide 1 receptor agonist glucagon like peptide 1 receptor agonist i have already explained the mechanism then they will also act as a dpp for inhibitors response they will response to release of insulin and oral glucose is four times more than intravenous glucose so increase the glucose level jise apne orally kuch glucose khaya to uske response mein insulin ka release jo hai wo four times zyada hoga then in intravenous glucose agar kisi ne intravenous glucose liya to utna insulin release nahi hoga but orally agar glucose lenge to zyada insulin release hoga okay in response to oral glucose so there is a one okay the in response to oral glucose there is a release of one peptide known as a glucagon like which amplifier and which enhances the release of insulin ye glucagon like peptide jaise release hota hai jaise aap orally kuch glucose over lete to ye generate hota if you take orally glucose or anything uh, sugar that that uh, releases the glucagon like peptide which am, which releases the insulin okay and now this is a, another target for anti diabetic drug so it acts by clp1 receptor agonist and dpp4 inhibitor amylin amylin analog like primaline type is a amylin analog so this amylin is nothing but the peptide from islets islets amyloid peptide ipp it acts by decreasing the glucagon secretion gastric emptying and appetite it is used for the treatment of type both type of diabetes then sglt2 inhibitors like glaplozin dapaglaplozin canaglaplozin has a adverse effect of increased urinary tract infection because of they they increases the excretion of glucose because of that increase the uti genital infections are there higher rate of breast cancer bladder cancer with depagliclozin okay you can see over here again mechanism of that dpp4 inhibitors are ingredient 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 means glucagon like peptides so with response to increased blood sugar level this they are released so they they ingredient itself they will increase the insulin release by increasing the cyclic amp in the cell we are seen that so increase the insulin will decrease the blood sugar and this ingredient will also cause glucagon inhibition glucagon release inhibition which also decreases the blood glucose level now ingredients are metabolized by enzyme known as dpp4 dipeptide peptidase 4 now this enzyme is inhibited by leptin cyta leptin valdeptin now treatment approach for diabetic patients diabetic patient aapko mila to usme kya kya treatment new diabetic patient so if you found new diabetic patient so Find whether it is type one or type two diabetes mellitus. If it is a type one diabetes mellitus, which kind of diabetes mellitus is there? Type one or type two? If type one is there, 
so you can modify the patient's diet and you can use insulin if it is controlled okay type 2 diabetes mellitus use diet modification exercise and metformin okay metformin use diet exercise and metformin if controlled okay if not controlled then modify plan if not controlled then okay if the patient is uncomplicated and well nourished if patient is good and well nourished then use metformin one drug like sulfonylureas magnetoid pioglitazone or tpp for inhibitor or alpha-glucosidazone metformin plus one drug if control it's okay if not control then use metformin plus two drugs from either sulfonylureas magnetinides dpp for inhibitor or pioglitazone or alpha-glucosidase inhibitor if controlled okay if not controlled go switch to insulin and metformin then you will get control so these are the treatment approaches for diabetes I am revising whole pharmacology. जैसे आपका केडी दे पड़ी है, पूरा ये पूरा केडी दे पड़ी है आप रिवाइज केडी दे पड़ी है, बाकी बुक्स, okay? So next one is the classes of medicinal chemistry. Medicinal chemistry of this antibiotic. So first class is sulfonylureas, and you will have a common structure of sulfonylureas like this, okay? So this is the common structure for sulfonylureas. So this R1 is there, and sulfonylurea. Urea मतलब this. Okay, so this is the urea part. This is the urea part. NH2, C double bond, NH2. This is sulfonyl group. Sulfonyl group. That's why sulfonyl urea. Now this is R1 and this is the here is a substitution. Here is also substitution. Okay. Now we will see the structure of activity relationship of sulfonyl urea. Substitution at para position of benzenic is prepared like methyl, acetyl, amino, chloro, then bromo, methyl or thiomethyl which increases the hypoglycemic what is the preferred substitution over here at the para position of benzene ring so this so methyl acetyl chloro group will be there at this position methyl acetyl amino chloro bromo methyl or thiomethyl which increases the hypoglycemic unit if the benzene ring at para position is substituted with the aryl carboxy aryl carboxy amido aryl carboxy amido alkyl which will give you second generation sulfonyl like levenkamide which in this case also activity is increased so ye if benzenic at para position matlab ye r group jo hai to isko agar aryl ho aryl carboxamido alkyl group ye attach kiya to aapko second generation drug milenge levenkamide and all that so also increases the activity and due to specific distance between nitrogen atom and substituent and sulfamido amide group डिस्टेंस यहां से यहां तक का डिस्टेंस सो ये बेंजीन रिंग एट पैरा पोजीशन इज सब्स्टिट्यूटेड विद अरिल कार्बोक्सा मिडो अल्काइल यू विल गेट अ सेकंड जनरेशन ड्रग्स एक्टिविटी इज इंक्रीज्ड ड्यू टू स्पेसिफिक डिस्टेंस अमंग द नाइट्रोजन आइटम ऑफ द सब्स्टिट्यूएंट एंड सल्फामाइड अमाइड नाइट्रोजन ग्रुप नाउ थर्ड पॉइंट इज देयर साइज ऑफ सब्स्टिट्यूएंट एट टर्मिनल नाइट्रोजन इज क्रूशियल फॉर एक्टिविटी एंड इट शुड इंपार्ट लिपोफिलिसिटी टू द कंपाउंड ये जो टर्मिनल ये है नाइट्रोजन इसके यहाँ पे जो आर लिखा है ओके सो साइज ऑफ सब्सटीशन और मिस इज क्रोशियल फॉर एक्टिविटी ओके शुड एंड इट शुड वट एवर सब्सटीशन सब्सटीशन यू आर सब्सटीटिंग ओवर एयर दैट शुड इम्पॉर्ट द लिपिलिसिटी ओके सो यन मिथाइल एंड इथाइल ओके यन मिथाइल और इथाइल ग्रुप विल शुड नॉट शो एनी एक्टिविटी सो इफ यू रिप्लेस दिस आर विथ मिथाइल और इथाइल कंपनी इज नॉट एक्टिव एंड इफ यू रिप्लेस दिस आर विथ यन प्रोपाइल और n butyl n pentyl like that okay so that higher substitution will give you better activity but up to 20 carbonate only so if you replace more than 20 carbonate or uh, sorry more than 12 carbonate so compound will lose that so yahan pe jo r group hai yahan pe yahan pe lipophilic group ta hai aapko jaise propyl butyl pentyl okay 12 carbonate tak hi activity hai uske baad mein nahi hai methyl aur ethyl ko bhi activity nahi hai प्रोपाइल के बाद में प्रोपाइल सब्सटिट्यूशन ब्यूटाइल पेंटाइल एक्साइल वगैरह तो बट कार्बोनेट में शुड बी लेस देन 12 का तो गेट द एक्टिविटी तो देयर आर ओनली 3 पॉइंट्स इन द स्ट्रक्चरल एक्टिविटी रिलेशन ऑफ योर सल्फोन 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 ड्यूरेस यू कैन सर्च एनी बुक सभी बुक में इतना ही है ओके नाउ ड्रग्स सल्फोन ड्यूरेस ओके सो जनरल स्ट्रक्चर क्या है याद रखो जनरल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सल्फोन ड्यूरेस नाउ फर्स्ट जनरेशन सल्फोन ड्यूरेस फर्स्ट जनरेशन फर्स्ट वन इज कार्बोटामाइड कार्बेटामाइड ओके सो कार्बेटामाइड रिमेंबर कार्बेटामाइड में यहां पे 
प्यारा पोषण के अमाइनो और ये जो आर जो है वो ब्यूटाइल है सो ब्यूटाइल प्लस अमाइनो रेस्ट ऑफ दिस इज सेम नाउ सेकंड टर्म इज 12 बीटा अमाइनो 12 12 मतलब टोलिन सो so, यहां पे मिथाइल आएगा ये टोलिन हो गया टोलिन रेस्ट ऑफ दिस इज सिमिलर टू कार्बोट अमाइनो क्लोर प्रोपामाइड क्लोर प्रोपामाइड क्लोर प्रोपामाइड क्लोर प्रोपामाइड में क्या है सो so, क्लोर क्लोर मतलब क्लोरीन ग्रुप सो so, यहां पे R1 पे यहां पे आएगा क्लोरीन सो पैरा क्लोर एंड प्रोपा मतलब प्रोपा मतलब क्या प्रोपा मतलब प्रोपेन प्रोपेन ग्रुप प्रोपा मतलब प्रोपेन ग्रुप तो यहां पे प्रोपेन ग्रुप है रेस्ट ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर इज सेम टोल जामाइड टोल जामाइड में गए टोल एजामाइड टोल मतलब टोलिन ग्रुप ये मिथाइल प्लस बेंजीन टोल है ये हुआ टोलिन ग्रुप एंड एजामाइड टोल जामाइड टोल जामाइड मतलब ये एजेपिन ग्रुप है साइक्लो एजेपिन ग्रुप है एक्सिल एक्साइड्रो एजेपिन एक्साइड्रो एजेपिन तो आपको आईपेक नेम भी यहां पे सिंपल आईपेक नेम है इजीली देन एसिड एसिटो 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 एक्सामाइड एसिडो एक्सामाइड इज नेक्स्ट स्टेज एसिटो एक्सामाइड तो यहां पे एसिड एसिटिक ग्रुप है एंड साइक्लो एक्सिल एसिटो एक्सामाइड एसिडो एक्सामाइड आईपेक नेम भी दिया है इजी टोल बीटामाइड का क्या है टोल बीटामाइड 1 ब्यूटाइल 3 इन 2 मतलब ये कार्बन एटम वन हो गया ये हो गया थ्री तो वन ब्यूटाइल थ्री थ्री इंटू क्या है थ्री इंटू पैरा क्लोरोपिन थ्री 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 इंटू पैरा टोलिन सल्फोन यूरिया क्लोर प्रोपमाइड का गैस है वन इंटू पैरा क्लोरो सल्फोन वन इंटू पैरा क्लोरो सल्फोन सल्फोन थ्री प्रोपाइल यूरिया टोल बीटामाइड टोल जामाइड का है वन एक्सा वन इंटू एक्सा हाइड्रो एजेपिन थ्री पैरा टोलिन सल्फोन यूरिया इन सेकेंड जनरेशन सो सेकेंड जनरेशन में आता है आपका ग्लिबिंग क्लामाइड और इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ग्लाइपोराइड यहां पे देखो एसिड हो ये जो ग्रुप यहां पे डाला है ये वाला कार्बोक्सी का एराइल कार्बोक्सी वीडियो अल्काइल एराइल कार्बोक्सी वीडियो अल्काइल सेकेंड जनरेशन ये हो गया आपका एराइल कार्बोक्सी वीडियो ये कार्बोक्सी वीडियो सी ओ एन एच कार्बोक्सी वीडियो अल्काइल एराइल कार्बोक्सी वीडियो अल्काइल इंक्रीजेस द एक्टिविटी इन केस ऑफ सेकंड जनरेशन ये सेकंड जनरेशन वाले तो ग्लिबिंग के माइड ग्लाइ ग्लिपिसाइड ग्लाइक्लेसाइड दिस आर द सेकंड जनरेशन नाउ नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट क्लास इज द बायगोनाइड्स बायगोनाइड्स में आएगा आपका पेन फॉर्मिन मेन फॉर्मिन ओके सो पेन फॉर्मिन में से यहां पे ओके बायगोनाइड्स मतलब वो क्या NH2 C डबल बॉन्ड हो NH NH C डबल बॉन्ड में NH मतलब ये टू टाइम्स ठीक है यूरिया टू टाइम्स बायगोनाइड्स को बोलते हैं बायगोनाइड्स फेन फॉर्मिन में फिनाइल इथाइल फिनाइल इथाइल को ये फिनाइल इथाइल तो फिनाइल इथाइल बायगोनाइड इसका आईपेक नेम फिनाइल बायगोनाइड मेड फॉर्मिन क्या है मेड फॉर्मिन में फिनाइल इथाइल नहीं है डाइमिथाइल 11 डाइमिथाइल अमीनो बायगोनाइड ओके इन मेगलिक नाइट्स मेगलिक नाइट्स मतलब दे आर द बेंजाइक एसिड डेरिवेटिव बेंजाइक एसिड डेरिवेटिव ये एलिटी नाइट ठीक है आप 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 एक मिनट आईपेक नेम भी लगा सकते हो देन रेपाग्लिनाइड and neo nitroglycerin then thiazolidine diols first means pyoglitazone cyglitazone then rosiglitazone then alpha glucosidase inhibitor mein aata hai aapka acarbose maglitol and maglibose acarbose matlab hai acarbose ka structure bahut hi complicated hai aur ek side pe aata hai bahut bada structure so uska nahi liya hai maglitol is nothing but this so maglitol and uh, this aldo aldolase retrograde aldolase retrograde is inhibitor is also another one plus this is nothing but the medicinal chemistry of your antidiabetic drug and 